In this lesson, we're going to be building a WhatsApp clone. Let's get started by pasting in some style information that I came up with. This is just going to help us get started and not waste time on CSS. Next, let's add this style tag here, styles.wrapper. And let's add another div here, which is going to be our messages container. So we'll say style is equal to styles.container. And then we will save that. And you're not going to see anything because we don't have any content in here. With that in place, let's start talking about the state we're going to need. We're going to need a messages array. So we need messages and set messages. This is going to represent one conversation in our app, and it's going to be an array of messages between two people. Let's just paste in some dummy messages that you can get from our sample project code, or you can type it if you'd like. And then we're going to make that our use state's initial state. Next up, we're going to map over our messages. And for every message, we're going to render a message component that we haven't made yet. Let's give it the key of message.id. And then let's also give it the message itself. With that in place, let's actually make our message component. There's going to be some more default styling here, and you can take a look at it. It's pretty basic stuff. We're adding some padding and margins. And then we're saying if someone sent it, then we want to align it at the end. If they received it, it's just going to be the container itself. You'll see how this makes sense in a minute once we actually render this. But for now, we need to add a div. So if the message is from ourself, so me, then we want to use styles.sent because the person viewing the screen sent the message. Otherwise, we want to view styles.received, meaning this message came in from someone else. Let's just render out the message content in here inside of a div. Okay, now we need to grab the message from props. And that's basically it for this component, pretty simple. So let's actually try to render this and see how it looks. So we need to just import our message component. And now you'll notice what I was talking about. If I sent it, it's going to have this little white space here. If I received it, it's going to have white space on the other end. With that in place, let's think about what we need to do next. We need to make another piece of state. Let's say message, actually let's call this current message and set current message. This is going to hold the current value of our text input. And let's set it equal to an empty string. And down here, we're going to have an input component that we're going to make in a second. And its value is going to be the current message. And then whenever someone hits enter inside of it, we want to take that message. And then we want to set the current message back to nothing because they just hit enter. And then we want to set messages and keep all the current messages. So we spread them. And then we want to add in a new one. For now, our ID is just going to be messages.length plus one. Ideally, this would come from a server, like I said, but we can do this for now. And then the content of the message, and then from me, because we're the ones sending it. So let's name this content, just so we can make it work just like that. Okay, now we need to make, and after I close this off, we need to make our input component. So let's do that now. So we'll use my shortcut again. And then inside here, we're going to use a text area. And then the first prop we're going to do is a style prop to just add some padding to make it feel nice. Let's just go with 12. And then it's value will come from our prop up above value, which we can add those now. And then we'll have an on change and every time this changes, we do need to add another prop called on change. We want to call on change e.target.value to get the actual text. And then we want to add a non key up like we did in one of our earlier tutorials. And we want to say if the e.key code is 13, then we want to call on enter with the target value. Otherwise, we just don't want to do anything. Since I'm using a ternary, this is how it would look, but you could do an if statement as well. 
So let's go and add our on change to our app as well. So if I come back over here on change, every time we get the content, we want to set current message equal to that content. And now with that in place, let's import it. Now you'll see we have this nice big box down here. As I type, it is updating. Let's hit the enter key. Oh, look, it sends it just like we would expect. The next thing we're going to do is build out two hooks. We're going to build out use fake message. This is going to let us send some fake messages in the chat as if someone else was sending us a message. So let's just say export const use fake message. If I can spell. And this is going to take a few different props. We're going to need to give it set messages so that it can actually change the messages array that we have rendered. And then we're going to have a message that we want to actually be added. And then we're going to say from so you can customize who it's from. And for now, we're just going to default that to test. So it's from a test user. We're not even rendering the names yet, but this will help us. And then lastly, we'll have a timeout here. How long to wait for this message to actually show up and we will default it to five seconds. So all we need to do inside of this is do a use effect. This use effect is going to do our set timeout and actually append this. So in our dependency array is basically all of these. We're dependent on the message changing, set messages changing, the from or the timeout changing to rerun this. And now inside of here, we want to say set timeout. And inside of our set timeout, we want to actually do the work. So this timeout is going to run for five seconds. It could be passed in differently later on if you want to simulate a more realistic conversation. So then the last thing we need to call in here is set messages. And we're going to pull out the current state of it. And then we're going to return that new array. So we're going to spread messages. This is supposed to be plural. And then we're going to add this next message. Same thing we did before. The content here is going to be the message that was passed in and then the from. And now we can test this out by going into our app. At the top here, we can add use fake message and then pass it all those props. So set messages, a message we want, hello from the other side. And then we won't bother passing in a from or a timeout. We'll just use those defaults. So let's save that. And now the page reloaded. Let's give it five seconds. And now you'll see another message come in. And you'll notice this key warning here. That's because I actually made a little mistake. Over here, we want to add one to the messages link. So if we save that and watch it happen again, we're not going to have a duplicate key warning. So now that we've built that out, I'm going to build one more hook on top of it. I'm going to call it use fake convo. And I won't bother wasting the time to actually type this out. I'm just going to copy and paste it. You'll notice that it's just a few random messages. It's just using the fake message hook multiple times. And it just takes a set messages function. That's all it needs. So now we can go back into our app. We can go up to the top and instead of use fake messages, we can just do use fake convo. And then we can say set messages. And we're going to see a realistic looking conversation come in. just like that. All right, so you may notice that I had here, I guess we should test scroll positioning. So I wonder what that means. Let's go into our use fake combo and let's add a couple more messages. Let's add the same one a few times just so we can simulate the screen needing to scroll. All right, so you'll notice that I'm scrolled up to the top but another message came in. A realistic chat app needs to scroll to the bottom when something new comes in, right? So let's put out a hook to do that. Let's create a new file and call it use scroll to bottom. And then let's export a variable with that same name. So this is just going to take the array of messages and then we're going to make a ref here called scroll container. This is going to let us hook into that DOM element and scroll it to the bottom. 
So let's import that. And then we're going to add a use effect. This use effect needs to run anytime the messages changes. So if this array changes in any way, it needs to know about it and rerun. Then right here, we will just say if there is no scroll container, then we want to return. This is just in case this use effect runs before the DOM element is hooked up into the ref, which shouldn't happen, but we'll add it anyway. So now we'll say scroll container dot current and we want to scroll to zero on the X and this scroll container dot current dot scroll height on the Y axis. Before moving on, make sure you add this return statement as well, which is a really cool hook, by the way, that you can use for a lot of different applications later on. So let's come in here and say, let scroll ref equal use scroll to bottom. And we need to give it the messages array. And now on this container that has the messages, we need to add that ref. So we get the ref and we say scroll ref dot current equals this dom ref. So now let's go over here and wait till the five come in at five seconds. Let's scroll up and see what happens when the final one comes in. Look, it scrolled to the bottom just like we wanted. Sweet. So we've covered a ton of stuff in this video, so I want to go over it quickly. First off, let me remove this since we're no longer using it, just to fix the warnings. We have some initial messages that are rendered, and we have two use states. We have the array of messages, we have the current message, then we have this use fake combo hook, which just sends a bunch of messages into this array randomly over time. And then we have this use scroll to bottom hook that will handle scrolling to the bottom when new messages come in, in case we have scrolled up. And then we built out a message component, which handles if it's from me versus if it's from someone else and rendering on the correct side. And then we built out an input component, very similar to what we've done in the past, which just has an on enter hook and on change calls back as well. In our use fake message, we just have a very simple use effect. And inside of it, we have a set timeout. And when that timeout completes, it's calling set messages and adding a new message based on whatever we passed into the hook. And then if you come into our use fake combo, you'll see that it just uses this hook multiple times to build out a conversation. Lastly, inside of our use scroll to bottom, we're making a ref. We're checking in a use effect if that scroll container ref is set. And if it is, then we want to scroll to the bottom anytime the messages changes. Messages changes. In the next video, we're going to be going over refactoring some of this to context to make it a little cleaner and adding some other features. In this lesson, we're going to be refactoring some of our code and using use reducer instead of multiple use states. To get started, let's copy our 11 WhatsApp code. I'll select all here and then copy it into our current directory. To get started, let's create a new file and let's call it chat reducer. And what I like to do is wrap use reducer. In this case, I'll call it use chat reducer. This way, whenever we want to use it, we just have less things to import. We don't have to import use reducer, our initial state and our reducer function. We just import use chat reducer when we need it. So now let's say use reducer and we need to give it a reducer and also an initial state. We'll initialize this with an object and then we'll give it messages and we'll use our initial messages from our app.js. Let's move that over here. And then go down here and say messages is initial messages. And next up, we need to actually define our reducer function. So let's make a function called reducer. This is going to get the current state and whatever action was passed into our dispatch function. And then we can do a switch statement and say whenever the action.type is or whatever the action.type is, let's do something different each time. We're going to need a few different cases here. Let's start off with set messages. And then I'm just going to return state for right now because we'll go through and add all these cases. The next case we'll need is when someone wants to add a message like from our input. And we'll return state again. Next, we need a case for set current message. 
and then one last time we will do a return and then we will do a default which will just return the state as well so let's actually build these out some of these you could probably do yourself just based on what we had in our previous code so now let's actually write these return statements correctly we want to spread the current state whenever set messages is called and then we want to set the messages equal to action.messages so when they call dispatch we need to pass in a messages array and this will set it in our state next up for add message this one's going to be a bit more involved we're going to spread the current state we're going to set the current message to be empty. In case you don't remember, we'll check our app.js. This method is going to replace this code here. Currently we have two use states, so we're saying set current message back to empty whenever someone hits enter and add it to the array. So we can encapsulate all of this in a reducer and clean up our code a little bit. The biggest reason to use a reducer is to cut down on your state management stuff getting mixed into your view code. And you'll see how much it simplifies this in a minute. So let's go back to chat reducer and then so we're setting the current message to be empty and then we're going to add that new message and let's take care of some of that stuff we had in that other file. So let's say state.messages dot length plus one is the ID and then the content is going to be action dot message and then we're going to make the from be action dot from so that you can set who it's from as well. This is supposed to be inside of the messages array. So let's do that. And then down here, close it. The last thing we need to do is spread the current state of the messages. So just to recap, since this is a little bit nested, we are taking the current state and then we're setting the current message to empty. And then we are updating the messages array, keeping all of the previous ones and then adding our new message to the bottom. Now our last one is a lot simpler. We're going to spread the current state and then we're just going to set current message equal to action dot message. So now let's go into our code and actually use this and pull out our multiple use states that we have. So we can take use chat reducer right here, go into our app.js. Let's delete all of this and let's say let state dispatch equal use chat reducer. Now the first thing we need to update is use fake combo. Now we're going to be passing it dispatch. So let's go into use fake combo and update that as well. So in here, let's just do a find and replace. Let's find set messages and let's replace it with dispatch since we're changing that. So we have that done. Now let's go into use fake messages and do the same thing. And now in here, instead of doing this normal use state update, we can make this much simpler. Let's tell it the action is add message and then the message that they passed in. And so that should work, but we do need to update more code before we can actually run this. So let's go back into here. Use scroll to bottom. This would now be state.messages. Down here would be the same thing. Our input value would be state.current message. And now right here we can change this to be message and then we will dispatch and this action would be set current message and then the message that we want to set and down here we can get rid of all of this and make it much simpler as well we'll say whatever this message is we want to dispatch and we want to send add message so we just cut down on quite a bit of code in here. This looks a lot simpler. Having these just one line dispatches and all of our state manipulation is handled in another place really makes us go back to just having view code, which is really nice as another developer on your team coming in here and trying to figure out what's going on. It's really quick and easy to see what's happening here. So now let's just test out the app real quick. We'll see that it does send a message, but for some reason it's not sending our fake convo messages. So let's go look at use fake message. It looks like I forgot to put type here. And this is something TypeScript would be very helpful with, which I'm used to using, and it would have caught that for me. But now you'll see everything works just as it did before. Cool, so let's review what our app.js looks like now. So now our app.js looks a lot simpler. Our chat reducer contains all of our state manipulation logic. We can also get rid of this up at the top of our component. 
and we can remove use state. You'll notice that if we had to add more state, which we will later on, it would have been a pain to add another use state and it would have started to make our code look really complicated, whereas this is nice and clean. In the next lesson, we're going to be putting this reducer into a context so that we can pass down dispatch and state without having to directly pass it through every level, without having to directly pass it down through every function. For instance, use fake combo right here, I pass it dispatch. Inside of there, it has to pass dispatch to use fake message which then takes dispatch and calls it. It's kind of a pain to have to pass stuff down this many levels, and that's what context is good for, so we'll get into that next. In this lesson, we're going to be moving our reducer into a React context. Before we get started, make sure you copy the lesson 12 code, or if you followed along previously, there's one little mistake that we made. You'll need to go into use fake messages, and you'll need to add the from variable right here. This way, our messages show up on the correct sides of the screen with our use fake convo code. With that done, let's get started. So let's create a new file here and let's call it use chat. This will be our context. Let's make a variable called chat context. And that will be equal to create context. And you'll notice that auto imported wrong, but that's from React. Now let's make our provider component. Let's call it chat provider. And this will be a React component that will then use the code we wrote previously. We will import our use chat reducer. And then down below, we need to return chat context dot provider. And the value of this context is going to be state and dispatch. Once that's done, we need to return the children here which we need to also grab up top. This will be any child components to this provider component. And then it's complaining that React must be in scope. So we can do that now, easy enough. We also wanna make sure we export this. And we also wanna export use chat. This will be a way for us to access our chat reducer from anywhere without having to pass it down through props. And so this will be equal to a use context and that context will be chat context above. With that in place, let's go into our app. Now let's go to the bottom of our app and let's make a new component. We'll call it app container. And inside of it, this is going to render our chat provider. And then it is going to render our app from above. We need to make sure we actually return it. And now we can go into our main index.js here and let's just import app container right here instead so everything should look the same but if we go in here now we can remove this and just put use chat and then we just need to make this an object now because we told it that state and dispatch are inside of an object and then everything's going to work the same and that might feel a little bit weird but there's a lot of cool things that we can do so we can go into our input, for instance, we can copy this, we can remove the on change, go into our input, paste this here, and the message would be e.target.value. And then our on enter, we could do the same thing. So let's take that, go back to our input. And if it's a, an on enter, then we'll call dispatch with the e.target.value as well. And let me delete this. Okay, and then go into our app again, delete that line. It also won't need state.current message either. So let's delete that. And now instead of our input, we can pull out let state dispatch equal use chat. And then down here, the value would be state.current message. We can get rid of all of these props. And you'll notice that if I type in here, it all works just the same. So this allows us to not have to pass through our dispatch. And the most useful spot would really be inside of use fake combo. So let's get rid of having to pass anything to use fake combo. And let's make use scroll to bottom take advantage of it as well. So let's go into use fake combo and use scroll to bottom. And let's do that now. So let's state equal use chat. 
And it's a hook that anything can use inside of our chat provider. So we will say state.messages. And now that one should be good. And now use fake messages. We'll need to do the same thing. We'll pull out the dispatch from use chat. And we can remove it from props above. Inside of use fake combo, let's make sure we get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll just need to remove that comma. And just like that, all of our code got simpler, I would say. Because we don't have to pass stuff through multiple levels, this is really helpful, especially if this app or this screen got much more complicated and there were many more DOM elements. You can see how it would be very powerful to be able to just use chat at any level without having to pass through props. In this lesson, we're going to add the ability to quote a message. So let's get started by opening message.js in our current folder. If you haven't been following along, make sure you copy your code from the 13 WhatsApp context folder into the current directory to get started. Let's add a div to every message that says quote. Let's save that and see what happens. All right, now it says quote, but it doesn't look very good. So let's add display flex. And then let's tell it to justify the content space between. This will make sure the quote button shows on the end. So there we go. It looks a little better. It would look a lot better if we had some icons, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just go with the text. So now whenever someone clicks the quote button, we'll dispatch something. So let's say dispatch equals use chat. And then let's come down here and use it. So we'll say dispatch and then we'll make a new action. Let's call it type quote message. And then let's give it the ID of the current message that we're on. I think that's about all we need here, but there's something really important to point out. You may have noticed that in our app.js, we removed having to pass props down to our input and a few other components. If I wanted to reuse this input component, I really can't do that because it's so tied into this chat stuff because it has used chat inside of it. So if you're going to reuse certain UI elements, it's actually better to leave the props. In the case of this input component, I do think it would be better to have an on change and on enter prop. This makes our component more generic and anyone can use it on any app. It doesn't matter if we're building a chat application. But something to keep in mind while you're building this, you may realize, okay, I'm only ever going to use this input for this chat application, so it doesn't matter if I make it generic enough. So it's something that the developer has to decide on their own. My personal preference is to always make everything props-based. Never add use chats to your lowest level UI components, just so that everything is reusable by default. If your product manager says, hey, that component that we have, I know we're only using it right there, but what if we use it in this new app? You can just tell them, sure, I can do that right now. I don't have to refactor anything because you made all of your low-level components props-based. So with that being said, let's go back into our message component. And we will stick with doing use chat because we're building such a specific example but again, just keep it in mind, you should always make your low-level components props-based and they shouldn't be using hooks. If you want, you could have a message component that is all props-based and then you could have another component called chat message that could use a hook on top of it. Again, this would allow you to reuse the low-level message component and you have your specific chat message component that's unique to this use case. All right, let's get back to what we were doing. So now that we have our dispatch that sends quote message and the ID of the message that they want to quote, let's go into our chat reducer and set that up. Let's add another case. And then inside of here, we're going to start off by returning our current state. And then we're going to set the current message equal to the ID that they passed in. But current message has to be text. So we have to actually find the message from our current state. So let's say current message or maybe it would be better to call this quoted message. This is the message they want to quote. And this would be state.messages. And we want to find the message 
by its ID. So where the message dot ID equals the action ID that we passed in. And let me close this here so it's easier to see. With that, we can say quoted message dot content is our current message. And then let's also say highlight message ID is action dot ID. And since we're quoting this, let's actually use our template literals here and let's put quotes around it. All right, so let's try this out and see what happens. Let's wait for this to load all the messages in first. All right, so it says, I guess we should test scroll positioning. I actually forgot the closing quote and let's add a blank space so that when you click into the field, you don't have to add one yourself. Okay, so it shows up here, but we want to actually highlight that current message as well. So we can do that pretty easily. We can add a style attribute right here inside of the message. And we can say if our current message ID equals state, which we can pull in from our chat provider or rather our chat context. And then we just say if message.id is equal to state dot highlighted message ID, then we will, let's just make the color red for now. Otherwise we don't want to set any styles. So we'll just put undefined. So now that we have that, let's click this time and it didn't work. That's probably because I spelled this wrong. So let's go into our chat reducer and I put highlight message ID. I meant to say highlighted. So we'll save that. Whenever you have an issue where something's just spelled slightly incorrectly, it's a huge perk if you're using TypeScript. TypeScript would have immediately told me, hey, highlighted message ID doesn't exist on state. Uh, so I wouldn't have had to kind of figure this out myself. It's just something to keep in mind as you get more into software development and using JavaScript. TypeScript is a huge help. All right, so let's try that again. This time when we click it actually turns red and we could type something else and hit enter. So that works as expected. And that's basically everything I wanted to go over, but I do want to mention one other thing. Let's take a look at this reducer. Now it's starting to get kind of complicated. So you can see it works. You can, you can reason about what's happening here, but highlighted message ID is now in state. And we should probably be clearing that when a message gets added, just so if I, for instance, type test and hit enter, it's still highlighted. So what we really want to do is clear that out whenever there's a new message as well. But there's another issue you could run into. If I quote this and then a message comes from someone else, it still clears it. Then we need to add another check like if action.from is equal to me. So if I sent the message in the input field, then we want to clear it. Sorry, let me fix that ternary. Otherwise, we want to fall back to state.current message. So we keep the current state. So you'll see what I mean here. If I click quote now, and then the new ones came in, it keeps it. But if I had sent a message myself, which we simulated right here, then it gets cleared. So now all of a sudden this state is like pretty complex. There's a bunch of different scenarios when certain things get set. And this is why there's so many third party state libraries in React. We'll go over each of them just a little bit, just to get our feet wet and see what you guys think of them. Personally, I try to use the built-in tools that React gives us, like context, reducer, and state. And I just try to break up my state a little more than we currently have here. It's not always possible, and that's why there's so many third-party libraries to help you handle state. In this lesson, we're going to refactor a couple components to make them more generic. I alluded to this a bit in the last lesson, but now we're going to actually do it so you can see what I've been talking about. So right now this message, like I said before, is completely tied to our use chat interface. Let's instead make a component called chat message, and that will be the one tied to our use chat interface. And then message itself will just be a generic message component that we could possibly reuse in other parts of our app later on. So let's take a look at this. So chat message is now going to have this interface. So let's put message here. And then we know that our generic message is not going to use chat anymore. So we can move that up here as well. And then let's also return the message. And now we're going to need to add a couple props to message to make it more generic. So the first one we'll need to do is highlighted. So let's put is highlighted. 
and that will be equal to exactly what we have in here. And now we can come and add that here. And now we're basically just taking a prop called is highlighted. So the generic component doesn't care about the logic behind being highlighted. It just wants to know true or false. Is this one highlighted? So next up, all we really need to change is the dispatch here when someone quotes something. So we can add another prop called on quote clicked. And whenever someone clicks on a quoted message, we will do exactly the same thing we had before. And then down here, we will just need to use that prop. So on quote clicked. And then let's add that up here. And then next, we need to actually import chat message in our root app instead of message. So let's do that as well. We're getting an error here because I forgot to pass through the message. What's cool about this is we can also do another thing here. Imagine we didn't want to always quote messages. So maybe in some other part of our app there was no quote option. Well, we could just add a check here now saying if that prop is there, then we want to render that div. Otherwise, we don't want to render anything. So now we just made this generic component for our message that's way more flexible than what we need it to do currently. So now in theory, we're able to reuse this message component somewhere else, and it's just props based. Let's do it one more time with our input component. So we'll do the same thing. We'll add an export const chat input. And then again, this is going to take the chat specific API, which is the use chat interface. And that's going to return our input now we can remove that and let's see what do we actually want to give it now we want to give this input a value and we know that's going to be state dot current message so now we'll add that prop here and replace what we had below and then we'll need to pass in an on change and the on enter so on change we want it to take that event and dispatch that current message and then we also want the on enter which will take that same thing and do this code below. So on enter, let's take the event and put that there. And now we just need to update and add these couple other props. So let's add on change and on enter. And so right here, we can just pass through the on change directly. And on the on key up in this part of the code, we will want to call on enter with the event. So we have that in place. Let's take our chat input and render that in our app and update the import and now let's make sure everything works as expected everything seems to be working just like we would expect so let's go over everything one more time so what did we really do we started out with a different mindset and this is something i encourage everyone to do when they're building react applications when you get a piece of design that you need to implement in React, don't think I need to pass this state over here, I need to do this when someone clicks. No, don't really think about it like that. Think about, okay, this UI element, what props does it need to render? In a case of a message, it needs a message. In our scenario and for how the design works, it needs an is highlighted Boolean. And then it needs some sort of click action when someone clicks the quote button. That's it. That's all the message needs to do because the message should only be responsible for itself and no other logic. And now we can build our specific use case on top of that. So in this case, chat message. Chat message takes the message. It pulls in some info from use chat to find out if something's actually highlighted. Whenever someone clicks the quote, we dispatch some stuff. But again, we can use this message anywhere else. It doesn't have to follow this interface at all. So that's the really awesome part about making props only components and building on top of them. And we did the exact same thing with the input. Now our input has value on change and on enter like it did way before when we first built this. And we have our chat input that uses chat and builds on top of that, passing in the props correctly. I hope you can understand the power of building components this way and how flexible your application becomes. Being able to reuse any part of your user interface at any time is huge and your product development team is going to be shocked at how fast you're able to build out new things for them.